When Masahiro Sakurai began production on Super Smash Bros. Melee, he put a space in the roster for a fighter to be determined, a retro one. He wanted a character specifically to represent the early NES lineup, one who lived in that era but never escaped it. The idea of a retro fighter has been explored throughout the series since, but it was radical then, in a less developed Smash community where obscure Nintendo lore was truly hard to access. Sakurai looked at a variety of games, Excite Bike, Balloon Fight, Clue Clue Land, and Urban Champion. That's a wealth of choices, he doesn't even seem to have considered Pit and Little Mac, more popular NES icons who would later make the jump to the roster. They also represent the more, for lack of a better word, arcadey side of Nintendo that doesn't much exist anymore. And all of them were passed over. The reasonings are a bit vague. Sakurai probably didn't want to get into it. On the Melee website, he talked about not seeing them as able to match the gameplay of Smash, with movesets that might not fit the stages or combat. An unrelated retro rejection, Ayumi Takebana from the Japan-only Famicom Detective Club, came from her having no Western recognition. But Sakurai also focused on things only that character can do, and to him, the characters didn't present that. So after whittling down option after option, Sakurai was left with an odd duck. A mountain climbing platform game whose novel two-player mode mixed cooperation with competition. To choose a character from Ice Climber is an odd choice from an historical perspective. It's not exactly major, most important for giving the main programmer of Super Mario Bros. some early experience. The thing people remember was an amazing main level theme. But if we take it from the perspective of that multiplayer mode, players fought with and against each other, a type of gameplay Nintendo came to adore, we get something pretty special. Special enough to convince Sakurai to give its player characters a shot. The Ice Climbers, Nana and Popo, are bizarre even by the standards of Smash. They're literally two characters at once. You play as the one in the blue, that's Popo, and your movements are mimicked by the one in the pink, that's Nana. That's an approach you're more likely to find in a bullet hell shooter than a fighting game, which values the dignity of the one-on-one. -on -one. And it's that breaking of the rules that they bring to the table. It makes some new players naturally wonder how this can even be legal. Certainly, Pit doesn't think so. Two of them? That's cheating! Say hello to the Ice Climbers. Infamously, this design also got them cut from Smash Bros., at least for a time. Having two characters in one wasn't possible in the Nintendo 3DS of the series' fourth installment, so they were cut. Maybe you could see that as a testament to their teamwork, or them going too far and breaking the rules. Being that they bring double the power of a normal fighter, the Ice Climbers demand certain drawbacks that border on extreme. Their mid-air movement is painfully slow, one of the few things to actually come from their game. The reach of their mallets is pretty short too, but their biggest weakness comes from the AI partner, and that's where things get really interesting. Because if the Ice Climbers' strength is from their friendship, then naturally their complementary weakness would involve taking that away. And who, boy, is that the case? Popo's moves, or Nana's moves as the two swap in a few alternate costumes, are pathetic alone, because they're designed to have backup. So if you were to, say, use longer attacks, projectiles, and fancy footwork to knock out the computer partner first, the main one is going to start feeling pretty underpowered. That's a really video gamey trope, right? In an RPG, that's like taking down the boss's special weapon or main henchman first. In a game like Smash with teams of players, that's isolating your opponent. It's not really a thing from the original Ice Climber, but a lot of video game players have experienced this in one game or another. It's just surprising to see it in this kind of game, with this kind of fighter. Again, convention broken. In that Melee website, Sakurai suggested something that is very unique to hear from a game director, that players who fought the Ice Climbers would feel, quote, annoyed, and that players using them would think them underpowered. That's an unusual way to talk up your new characters, but he's also not wrong. The very nature of the Ice Climbers often creates a distinct, often inadvertent mind game when you see them in a fight. It's a challenge for both sides to adequately gauge their power and threat. Which is cool. And crazy. And arguably not conducive to clearly learning how to use them. With all this foregrounded talk about their weaknesses and inscrutability, it's worth noting that the Ice Climbers can feel very fun and very strong. Hitting away people with twice the power is cool. Again, it's like you're walking the wrong side of the law. And their special moves are especially great. The Ice Shot, pretty much the only one that even remotely comes from their game, is really fun when you're lobbing two blocks of ice at once. Same with the Squall Hammer, which is pretty bland with one partner, but feels just so strong with two. And coming from the brink of a KO with a dramatic, heroic belay feels really empowering. Though it can often end in sorrow. 
Sorry, Nana. <laughs> Perhaps part of why the special moves feel so strong is also due to their general coldness. Ice Climber had an atmosphere of intimidating cold, one that's a lot more prevalent than any clear moves you could use. Just by that, all you have is the hammer, the ice blocks, and the animation of one climber jumping over the other. So in the interest of giving them personality, and enough moves, Nana and Popo are themed around cold, wind, and mountaineering. They have two specials themed around ice storms, their recovery is a liberal interpretation of mountain climbing, and their final smash summons a giant iceberg. They also have extra good traction on icy surfaces, a 180 from their own game, but something you'd expect from trained climbers. And though it's a small detail, the design for their coats are always meant to look extra warm, which helps keep the feel going. It's a mood that, again, feels very unusual, even in a roster filled with people who spew fire and lightning everywhere. But there's also one other part of their power, one most players will never get or even need to see. At some point in Melee's competitive scene, people realize the potential of desyncing, a process of exploiting the AI of the partner climber. The partner will alternate between mimicking the leader and, if separated, trying to rejoin them. It's beyond the abilities of most players, but you can skillfully trick the computer into moving and hitting in a specific way, often giving you way more control of the stage than one character should have. This time it's the players who broke the rule. The process pretty easily lends itself to exploitation. The Ice Climber's Brawl incarnation was notoriously bad with this. High-level players could simply trick the partner climber into repeatedly grabbing foes, making it easy enough to combo them into death with little pushback. This is something a large majority of players won't experience, but it's central to the Ice Climber's presence in competitive Smash. For many high-level players in Melee and Brawl, the fighter isn't viewed as having much value beyond this exploit. Part of this is that the Ice Climbers have a design that's easily exploitable in competitive play. The partner's presence is vital to their success, so losing them is often a death sentence. But the design is also incredibly challenging to learn at a high level, far more than almost any other fighter. Ultimate has aggressively worked to curtail this. Changes to the partner's movement has made it harder to reliably or extensively manipulate them, and the grabs that made them almost indomitable are slower and weaker. To compensate, the climber's movement and moves are generally stronger, but that hasn't been enough, certainly not for fans who prefer the more classic version of the fighter. This is an unfortunate, but maybe inevitable outcome of a character as weird and out there as the Ice Climbers. You come up with a design that's wild and appealing in its wildness, but incredibly difficult to use. People get around this with an exploit that can just dominate opponents. They mostly use just that in competitive bouts, but that's not great character design. So you naturally have to limit how effective that is and buff their other attributes. But that may not fully compensate, or maybe it makes them less exciting. Every competitive scene for any sport has seen this story, the dance of setting and breaking the rules. But lest we end on a down note, I think it's worth extolling the fact that this discussion comes from a fighter so odd, so abnormal, and so charming because of it. That we have the Ice Climbers at all to argue about this is incredible. They're incredible! Nana and Popo simply should not be. The whole idea of two fighters working simultaneously is insane. But look at them, gloriously flaunting basic tenets of fighting games. Beyond limiting their desyncing, there's never been an attempt to constrain that flaunting. They literally got cut from a game rather than let that happen. If the Ice Climbers struggle at times to work with a player, that's not great, but they are really well designed for a concept that breaks the logic of the series. When you're getting the handle on them and plowing through foes, it feels great. When you use that lovely up tilt and your bud follows you on it, that's fun. It's fun. The Ice Climbers' friendship is joyful and infectious. I'm blessed to have a great partner of my own, Nantenjax, who's edited and made this video. Also supporting us are our Patreons, who you can see here. Thank you all. If you like this video, consider going on there and helping us make videos like this. This is Wolfman Jew reminding you to stay frosty and return to the source.